he's sitting in his tent, right, in, in, in Genesis uh, 18, and um, there's this whole unbelievable backstory when these angels come. Mm -hmm. That And the, the backstory is that he's sitting there, and the verse says that he's sitting there in the heat of the day. But the truth is that the, that that's the way it's translated because the, you know translations sometimes have to make something readable. But in Hebrew, it, it actually uses this letter kaf ki chomayom that it was like the heat of the day. And so the sages have a whole idea that the the heat on that day was so intense it was like manufactured. It was artificial because because God was so concerned that Abraham should not have to. Um, be bothered with wayfarers that he made it exceptionally hot that day because he didn't, because he, he was suffering, you know, he was in a lot of pain. It was the old man, the third day after his circumcision. And God knew that if there would be people outside that Abraham would run after them to make a meal for them. So he, he the expression that Rashi uses is that he took the sun out of its sheath. And he made it like super hot so Abraham would not be bothered. So God, as it were, changed nature for his friend Abraham, you know, to make it easier for him, but then God actually had <laughs> to change nature again because he saw that the pain that he was suffering from not being able to, to do kindness to guests was greater than the physical pain. And so he sends these three men. And so Avram looks up and he sees them and he thinks that they're wayfarers, you know. And so he runs to make them a meal. And of course they had their missions. Each one had their own mission as far as the continuation of the of the parsha, but the idea is that you know the first words of the parsha are that Hashem appeared to him, and then all of a sudden in the next in the next verse he lifts up his eyes and he sees these men and he goes running after them, and we never hear another word about the fact that Hashem appeared to him. Meaning there was there's something very powerful going on here that God visited Abraham and they were talking, mm -hmm. and then Abraham like. Leaves him. He drops him. Like he leaves the phone dangling, <laughs> the cord, for those just, of us who remember. Just hold a minute, Hashem. I've got something I've got to do. I've got to help some people. Right, here. right. And, then, know, he, yeah, and then he doesn't like, go back to that conversation, whatever it was. And, yeah. and, it's, and on the basis of this incredible idea, the sages say that, that hospitality to guests is greater than receiving the Shekhinah. Because that's exactly what happened here. He left the Shekhinah, as it were. He left the divine presence to go and and attend to these to these people. I I like to put it in a way that I think is 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 very um, expressive. It's like it's like he was saying to Hashem, like, I don't have time to talk to you. I have to be like you. I don't have time to be with you. I have to be like you, which is which is the true. Um, definition in a, in a Torah mindset of a religious experience. The other thing is that, as you know, uh, he goes and he runs after these cattle, right? <laughs> he's like, if you picture it, like he's hobbling, he's 99 years old, he just had a rather painful, rather painful operation. And then, then Abraham ran to the cattle, right? So there is a very powerful tradition uh, that I know you're aware of in, in the words of our sages that, that one of the calves ran and Avraham ran after it and it ran into a cave. And Avraham runs okay, into the was. cave to, to uh, don't forget where he lives, he runs into this cave mm -hmm. to, to fetch this calf and runs into the, ca into the cave and he discovers the entrance to the Garden of Eden, Amen. which is underneath the tomb of the patriarchs in Hebron. That's another whole podcast but the point is how, and how did he know that that's what it was because he sees Adam and Eve lying there in repose and so and he knew that this is the place that he wants to be buried and he knew that this was the Garden of Eden so make a very very long story very very short because this is like an incredible idea but the bottom line is he discovered the entrance to paradise chasing after this little calf meaning that the road to Gan Eden was literally paved with chesed because he was, yeah. in other words, that is the way, uh, if I just want to translate this into what we're, the message that is being broadcast to us is that the way to paradise is through simple acts of kindness. Mm -hmm. It's just an That's unbelievable right. it thought. Turned, it, it turns the old saying on its head. You know, the old saying uh, is uh, the road to hell 
is paved with good intentions. I was hoping we no, could leave that re- out, but okay. No, but no, but in reality, the road to to paradise is paved with good intentions. Right. That's that's exactly. the reality of that. It turns it on its head, you know. And I, what's interesting about this whole this whole narrative is the fact that you know here is Avraham who is who doesn't need to do this. He has. He has people that work for him, that he has servants, and any of them could gone, he could have let them carry it out. But as you're pointing out, he was so intent on doing the right thing and making sure it was the best of the breed, he just basically ignored the help, you know, in his community that were there and ran after. And there's this, I ran into this this uh, amazing detail, and he said that uh, the sages tell us that they, he sorted out three calves and the reason was that I and I can't figure out where this is going, because I read the commentary and it's just I, this odd detail. Should I should he, I fill it for you? Is it about the tongue? Yes. So okay. So because <laughs> the question is, the question is why three? Why three calves? Yeah. Because what each one Could is going to eat? A, with one. Each one is going to eat yeah. a calf. So the, it must be that there was something singular about each one, a delicacy, and that he needed three. And what is it? There's only one thing. It's tongue. But Rashi yeah. says he was going to serve it to them with mustard. Yes. How does mustard. he know that? How does he know that? <laughs> right. And the how only answer he? is, how else does one eat tongue, a tongue sandwich without mustard? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. But of course, I'm not a meat eater, so I'm just giving that over to you, but, you know, yeah. that's for those that eat deli, you know. I just thought that was a, a very interesting uh, detail to bring out in the story, and I I could not, I could not fathom why, <laughs> I, I guess because I've never eaten tongue. Maybe that's the, <laughs> so, anyway. Well, well, don't feel bad about that, Jim. Okay. Don't feel bad about it. Uh, but, of course, if you would have been one of Abraham's angels, you would have had to fake it that you were eating the tongue. Spared. That's the thing, is that, is that you know, when we talk about kindness, and we've, you know, with these examples that we've given are extreme, like what Rachel did and what Avraham was all about. So Torah sets the, 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 you know, the benchmark very, very high and expects us to strive to do our best to emulate them. But, but the idea is that we cannot underestimate the importance of chesed. It's not just like, yeah, you know, he's a nice guy. He, he tries to help out, you know. No, it's that what we're actually supposed to be is so in love with Hashem and so connected to each other that we want to spread goodness to every creature, right? It means to every living creature, not just to friends and not just to human beings, and but to animals and to every and to, we just want to be a source of light and blessing and benevolence. We want to be imp- making improvements and 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 make and aiding every level of existence that we come in contact with. That's a person of, of kindness, right? So again, uh, Psalms 89, the world is based on kindness, and Psalms 52, uh, the kindness of Hashem all day long. This is, this is the message, as a, as opposed to you know, and again, the, the, this week's Torah portion begins with Avraham running to take care of these people who he p- perceives as just simple wayfarers, and he discovers quite accidentally the entrance to paradise because he's so concerned with with making a meal for these people. And then we find, like you say, he's basically begging Hashem to find some uh, some merit, some redeeming social value in some of the citizenry of this of these wicked places, because he he is committed to to to, to humanity, to do his best for humanity. And in fact, this this beautiful verse, you know, when Hashem is basically um, getting ready for this. So he says, and Hashem said, shall I conceal from Avraham what I do? Now that Abraham is surely to become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall bless themselves by him. For I have loved him because he commands his children and his household after him that they keep the way of Hashem doing charity and justice. So that is, that is like his whole job description and Hashem it is basically saying, since this is who you want to be, then you're my partner in the upkeep of the world. 